today we're going to be going over an A1989 MacBook Pro. This is the 13-inch um, Touch Bar MacBook Pro made between 2018 and 2019 that randomly stopped turning on one day. So as always, what we always do here is we plug in our USB amp meter and get a baseline of what the board is doing. That's our first line diagnostic step. And that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to plug in my USB amp meter and see what I get. So with my USB amp meter plugged in in one port, Looks like I'm getting 5 volts and 0 0.24 uh, milliamps, so 240 milliamps. And what that tells me is that the USB-C circuit is not initialized fully, but it is trying to do stuff. So what this is telling me is that the CD3215s are at least trying to talk to each other. There's some communication going on, but there's a reason why they are not fully um, engaging. So based on this amp draw reading, um, I can infer that PP bus G3 hot will be present. Um, and what I'm going to be looking for in this case, I'm going to be looking for a port that is doing something differently from the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go plug this into each port, all right? And I want to see if one port is has slightly higher, slightly lower amp draw, anything along that nature. So this one port is 0 0.23, so 230 to 240. Um, our second port on this side is going to be, let's see here, all right, 0 0.20, so 200, 20, 0 0.24, 0.25, all right, that's not really any difference there, um, so there's no difference, and let's go here, so if, if all my ports are the same, I'm kind of going to suspect something uh, central going on, but that doesn't necessarily rule out an issue with our CD3215s. So it looks like all of these are reading nearly identical. So as of right now, all of our ports um, have pretty much identical amp draw. Now at this point, I'm thinking either something central or something is wrong with the TBT ROM, one of the TBT ROMs. Now the TBT ROMs contain important information for our CD3215s to initialize, and if something's wrong with the CD3215 um, TBT ROM, it's usually not going to work. And if one CD3215, the, I believe the ROMs are in pairs on this board, I think there's two of them, one for each side, and I have to look at the schematic. Uh, but if one side is not working, or if one uh, something's wrong trace-wise or resistor-wise with a ROM, the other side's not going to work either. And usually when um, something is wrong with our TBT ROM, we see 240 milliamps like this. And sometimes they cycle, sometimes they don't cycle. So that could definitely be our issue here. I just want to do a visual inspection now around our chips. Sometimes we can get little bits of corrosion around them. They're, the user denied history of liquid damage. So, you know, that's not really off the table, of course, because everybody lies about that. Um, so let's go ahead and just give it a little overview under the scope and see if we see anything remarkable um, and go from there. So I'm going to start on this side and you can see this looks pretty pristine all right look at this this is clean this board is clean so i'm mostly concerned about our cd3215 area our pmu can cause symptoms like this it's unlikely our t2 can cause issues like this it was not in dfu mode that does not mean it's good all right this cd3215 also looks great but the underside of the board all right, now this one's a little bit dusty. Look at that. And it's common that this dust, look at this dust, okay? This is not just any average dust. This is dust that has collected moisture from the air. And you could tell that just based on how it looks. It's kind of ugly looking, kind of suspicious looking. All right, look at that. Okay, this can definitely cause an issue if it sits. This is not causing an issue here. It is present, but it is, it is not actively corroding anything. So there's that. Here's one of our TBT ROMs. This looks beautiful. There's no corrosion here. Let's move on to this side. Okay, here's another TBT ROM. Dusty, very dusty for sure. So here's another one of our TBT ROMs right here. Okay. And this area looks really dusty. Notice that same kind of thick type dust. All right, look at that. Right, this is dust that's basically had junk and stuff condensed in it from the air. And oh look. Interesting. 
Look, I can't even see this, but there's two resistors under here, and these resistors do not look like they're in good shape at all. So this can definitely cause an issue. Let's clean this off, and let's see if this is actually an issue or just mimicking an issue. Yeah, look at that. That is That corrosion is like thick, calcified, hardened stuff, and that's the actual kind that causes issues, that can bridge stuff. Okay, look at that. I wonder what these two resistors do. Let me open up a board view. This is an 8200850. So I'm going to pull up a board view for that and we're going to see what those do. And I were to if I were to guess, I would say those are something to do with the TBT ROM. Um, this wasn't pre-diagnosed or anything, um, but I'm going to guess based on the symptoms, those resistors have something to do with the TBT ROM. Are they necessarily bad? Probably not. Should we replace them? Most likely, depending on what they are for. So I'm going to open up a board view for this. Let me just find it in my list. All right, and our board view is open. So it looks like these guys were right here. UPC, XA, R, OSC, whatever. Okay, it's a CD3215 communication line for something. Um, does it have something to do with our TBT ROM? Maybe not, but it does have cross communication between two CD3215s. If these guys cannot talk to each other, it will not work. Okay, all of these, this is actually a really poor design. Every one of these CD3215s has to talk to each other and to the T2 for the system to even turn on, regardless if you're plugging anything in or not. Um, this other resistor adjacent to it, which I think is a no stuff, is a TBT ROM resistor here. So let's just confirm this is a no stuff. Yep, this is a no stuff. And this resistor here is a 15K, and the one adjacent is a 1 mega ohm. So 15K and a 1 mega ohm. So let's figure out if these are actually bad. My guess is these just need a little touching up. Resistors, corrosion doesn't necessarily harm resistors. It can infiltrate them, but it's really rare. It's usually just a connection problem. So what I'm going to do is I just want to see if I can kind of refurbish these guys a little bit. Um, either way, this is getting ultrasonically clean, but I kind of just want to see with my iron if I can restore their solder joint connections well enough to get this to work and I'm gonna guess I will be able to because I've definitely seen worse but one quick test to if you need to replace a resistor is if you touch it on one end and it just comes up all right and these did not and you could see that this resistor right here this one is fine okay but you see this other one that one is not fine. All right, so this one is totally fine. Um, you can see it, as soon as we touch solder on it, it cleaned up. This guy, on the other hand, is bad news. And look at that trace there. Look at that pad. That pad is totally gone. It's not totally gone, but it is not making an electrical connection anymore. And that is most likely what's wrong with our board here. Okay, look at that pad. Let's zoom in. Look at that. See? It's all rusted and oxidized. That is not a sound electrical connection there. Okay, that is not sound. That is not going to be making a good electrical connection by any means. So I'm just going to scrape at that just lightly on the pad. And let me add a little bit more flux. And then we're going to solder a new resistor on. I believe this was the one mega ohm. some solder on here and see that cleaned up pretty nicely. So the CD3215 is underfilled and I don't really want to use my hot air for this. I'm going to try avoiding my hot air if I can. That may not be 100% avoidable, but I'm going to try my best. So R3105 is a 1 mega ohm resistor in 201 configuration and 201 format. 201 size, I should say. So we're going to grab another one from our resistor reel right here. And I'm actually going to, we have to think about this. We just replaced the leaded, lead free solder with leaded solder. Okay, leaded solder has a lower melting point than lead free. This is a BGA chip. So I can use a lower temperature on this and most likely solder this guy into place effortlessly. And I'm going to try and do that here. So I'm going to blow my air away from that resistor. I'm going to use my big nozzle, believe it or not. 
And I'm going to go about 300 Celsius, actually a little bit lower. Let's, let's do this at about 250 Celsius because that is not going to have the thermal ability to take up that CD3215, but it will be able to solder this resistor down. So we're just going to keep heat right here. And the solder is going to melt here soon. All right, it's going to start to melt. All right, it's melted on one side. It's melted on the other side, and we're good to go. That was soldered at 250 Celsius. Um, that is not hot enough to float our chip. It is not hot enough to melt lead-free solder, even though lead-free solder melts at 217. Um, it just doesn't have the thermal capacity to be able to do that. So now we're going to let the board cool for a second, and then we're going to see if this works, and we'll throw it back in the enclosure and see if it boots into an operating system. All right, let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it works now. All right, so 5 volts, 0 0.024, 0 0.04. It's going to cycle 20 volts, 0 0.03. Let's wait for it to climb up to around 500 or so, 700. We are good. That is booting current, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and throw this in the enclosure, and let's see if this works. Okay, we have this plugged in. It is booting into an operating system here. Um, I'm just going to give it a second here. But we do have an Apple logo. We do have 20 volts and normal amp draw on the charger. And it should at any time boot into the operating system now, unless, of course, it's booting into recovery, which happens quite often. There's a bunch of stuff unplugged, so it might be a little bit throttled. doesn't know what's going on. Almost there. I'm just going to set this right here. And there you have it. We have booted fully into macOS. Everything looks good. Uh, the battery is stone dead, so that's why it was a little bit slow there. Um, anytime the battery is below a certain uh, milliamp hour uh, rating, it will the CPU will be throttled, so that's why it was slow. Um, but yeah, this is works. Data is recovered. Machine is working. Fully booting, fully functional. And that's it for this one. Time for an ultrasonic bath, and then this goes back to the customer. Thank you for watching.